Well, good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris back again at the Ancient Scholar. It's uh, really early in the morning for me. Uh, the office just opened up. The college is just opening. Um, and I've got class here in about half an hour. So I figured I'd record a, a quick video or maybe not so quick video. We'll see how it goes uh, real quick and uh, get this up. And this is probably going to be... I'm thinking this might be the last uh, video of the serotonergic um, psychedelics. I, I might do one on mescaline. Um, I probably will, so yeah, just disregard what I just said. <laughs> okay, so we've been talking about the uh, serotonergics, uh, and here I have serotonin, and look, what, what do you know? I've, I've got uh, proper black-colored uh, uh, carbon atoms, okay? So this is 5-HT, uh, 5-hydroxy, tryptamine and what I'm going to be talking about next is something that looks at first glance if we just kind of gestalting it at first glance it looks markedly different than serotonin and I'm going to go ahead and hold that molecule up and this is um, LSD well this is a molecule of LSD or lysergic acid uh, diphthalamide um, LSD or lysergic acid diphthalamide um, is uh, known as a lysergamide. That's the class, that's the subclass of uh, molecules in the serotonergic psychedelics that it belongs to. And at first glance, it does not look particularly um, like the psychedelics that we've talked about to this point. It looks uh, very different. And it is a little different. Um, it is a, it's a derivative of lysergic acid. And, and what it is, it's, it's a substituted uh, tetracyclic amine. Okay, so I have my amine side chain here. Um, and um, I should say that these little methyl groups here, this isn't totally accurate for what LSD really looks like. What, what you should also have a CH2. There should be two CH2 groups and then the methyl groups coming off of the CH2 groups. But I'm, again, I'm kind of low on um, the little, little black carbons. And, and I think putting the, the yellow in there would be a little unsightly. So uh, with that small, small little, um, you just kind of use your imagination, pretend that there's a CH2 and then a CH3 there. But um, the, the terminal ends are good. So there we go. Um, Okay, so this is, um, it's a substituted tetracyclic amine, okay, so you, it's based on lysergic acid, and, and basically you have your amine side chain here, and then you have this tetracyclic, or cyclic, however you want to say that structure, of four different rings, one, two, three, four rings here, and then my amine chain that comes off, and this would actually be a bit bigger with the, the CH2 groups that are missing there. Okay, so this, at first glance, this looks markedly different than um, serotonin, than 5-hydroxytryptamine. But there are some similarities, and those similarities have to do with something called an indole nucleus. And an indole, uh, when we say something has an indole nucleus, um, an indole consists of two different ring-like structures. It's a benzene ring that has been bound, or a you have a benzene ring, and then you have what's called a um, pyrrole ring that is uh, bound to that or kind of merged in with that. And a pyrrole ring is a five-carbon ring um, that has um, a nitrogen topping it off. So if you look here... This is the indole nucleus here. I've got my aromatic or my, my aromatic ring, my benzene ring here, and then I have the um, pyrrole ring here. And we can tell that because I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, um, uh, five atoms make up the backbone, four of which are carbon, and then I have the um, the uh, nitrogen here and in, in, in NH uh, group. Uh, so that's that, and at, again, at first glance, this doesn't look too too uh, too similar to serotonin. But well, let me show you something here, and this is not something I've said up to this point because I wanted to kind of keep it a uh, keep it a surprise. Here's serotonin. I want to let's just look at serotonin a little differently. I'm going to hold serotonin up, and I'm going to hold this up. Serotonin. Ah, what do you know? 
what do you know? Serotonin belongs to a subcategory known as the tryptamines because it's uh, based on um, tryptamine, the amino acid. Um, this comes from lysergic acid, but they both share, okay, they both share this um, indole nucleus, okay? The LSD just has some more junk hanging off of the indole nucleus, and it incorporates additional um, rings. It's what we call tetracyclic. So there is actually chemical similarity between these two. And the interesting thing about the LSD is LSD is um, probably the, the best studied agent. It's been around for a long time, since uh, I believe the 30s. Um, it was synthetically produced, and its, its, its synthetic production was rather accidental. Um, there's actually kind of a, a rich history there, the, the, the chemist that actually um, accidentally produces synthetically and, and exposed himself. Um, not really knowing what was going on, he'd actually um, consumed a real, a several hundred micrograms, and, and the minimal, right, your minimal dose to have psychedelic activities right around 25, 30 micrograms um, ingested. Uh, and it was a few hundred micrograms that he had uh, consumed, and uh, he had some interesting stories there about him thinking he was going to die. He was having these very profound hallucinogenic uh, experiences, as, as you might um, guess. So kind of, an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting story, interesting situation there, but let's go ahead and just talk about it because um, there is more, there is a lot of literature and a lot of information out about LSD. So um, it's one of the most well studied. Um, ingestion tends to be a common route. It's not, it's not as susceptible first pass. Um, it's water soluble. Um, at first glance, it, it doesn't appear that it would be particularly water soluble, but, but it is actually water soluble. Um, has significant protein binding, um, 80% 80, 80 or more um, protein bound. So um, as, as you might guess, if with that, that significant level of protein binding, the volume of distribution or the apparent volume of distribution of this, this agent is going to be rather small. In fact, it is. It's about 0 0.28, 0 0.3 um, liters per kilogram. So it's very small um, volume of distribution. But... The, again, with the extensive protein binding, that shouldn't come as uh, any surprise. Um, its uh, its a actions are rather complex, and this is one. When we talk about this, um, there are a lot of uh, when we talk about the uh, different types of uh, serotonin receptors. I'd actually mention the receptors um, in the first video, and um, the the LSD appears to antagonize some and then agonize other um, serotonin receptors, um, which is kind of interesting. And I won't go back over that just because I've already talked about that, um, I believe, in the first video. Uh, but there is a fairly uh, complex uh, mechanism of action occurring here. Um, the concentration, LSD tends, it looks like it's, its most significant physiological effects uh, center on um, its effects in the uh, limbic system, the reticular activating system, and the visual cortex. And that should come as no surprise because intense, um, intense visual hallucinations um, are, are reported with LSD. LSD is interesting in that it is, or not necessarily interesting, but um, it is metabolized uh, primarily uh, by hepatic enzymes, um, hydroxylation, and glucuronidation. Okay, so phase two biotransformation reactions are going to be very important uh, when it comes to biotran the biotransformation of this. There are several different metabolites that LSD can be um, turned into. Uh, virtually all of the LSD metabolites are um, inactive. Okay, it's, it's really only the actual LSD uh, molecule that has um, the significant psychedelic um, activity. Um, like I said, uh, typical dose is around, typical dose that we, we start seeing psychedelic effects around 25 micrograms. Um, onset can take anywhere from uh, half an hour to an hour, and the duration of action can last a couple of hours. I, I, I believe the, um, 
the elimination half-life is is right around two and a half, three hours. Um, so here, here my computer goes again, getting all crazy on me. Uh, it's the, that Macintosh thing going on there. Um, yeah, uh, we do see LSD uh, is produced by um, certain plants and um, certain uh, fungus. Um, and in fact, some of the early discoveries uh, with LSD involved um, or, or got, I mean, uh, fungi molds. Um, and, and that's where it is actually produced uh, naturally. So um, it is currently uh, produced synthetically. And uh, it's probably, probably, there's probably more evidence out there about its use and abuse as a psychedelic. So I think traditionally, we say that it is the most abused psychedelic agent. Um, I'm not sure how the numbers would actually pan out as far as its use and abuse. Um, it's, it's real hard to tell, especially with the DMT um, becoming such a big thing and uh, the apparent safety of that. Um, so I don't know. It'd be interesting to really see what what, what real unbiased numbers would be. Uh, another thing, just to note about LSD, um, people can, they of course are familiar with the the term bad trips. And the interesting thing about LSD is people that take it may actually experience um, psychological psychedelic issues uh, months, days, years, decades after they have stopped taking LSD. Um, they, they can have um, problems with, with hallucinations and, and whatnot years after they've, they've stopped taking LSD. So um, there are some long-term consequences associated with uh, the use of LSD. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to cut it off here. Um, hopefully you found this video interesting. And um, it looks like I'll probably do a, another video on a mescaline. Um, and I, I think there's some, some relevancy there, particularly in the United States. Uh, like I talked about with ayahuasca and DMT, there are some very, um, very specific situations where it's, it's legal in some countries and it's an accepted part of uh, their spiritual and religious um, cultural practices. Well, some, something somewhat similar uh, is going on in the United States, has been going on in the United States regarding the, the, the aboriginal uh, people uh, of the United States and the importance of masculine in their um, spiritual and religious um, rituals. So it, it's probably something worth talking about in addition to its um, recreational use as well. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.